So I'll just come to what is medical informatics, actually healthcare informatics. Do, does anybody know the difference between health and medicine? Health is absence of disease. Very good. And medicine is medical is providing the healthcare support, right? So there is a slight difference because health actually, when now I'll be talking a little about how we are moving ahead from what is called, now we're coming to what is called personalized health. So everybody has to take care of his own health and ICT can help you in that. Medicine was going to the doctor. It was linked directly with the medical community. So medicine was not as a drug per itself, but going to the medical community for getting your health problems solved. But ICT can make it reverse. Now it is the age of personalized health that the healthcare can come to you, you can reach out to them, you can read things, you can do things on your own. And finally, it is your health that is important. The doctor is only sometimes a mean, but he may no longer mean, especially with the higher use of ICT. So the components, I'll just now come into the various components of medical informatics, which is basically administration of healthcare support. It's done at two levels. One is called an health information system, which is used in public health. That is what the government is trying to provide health support to the communities and all that. Other is hospital information system, although unfortunately both are called HMS health management system and hospital management because the H is common. Hospital management is managing a hospital through inventory control, through your stocks and uh, you know your bed admission rates and all that. I'll be talking a little bit about that. Then other components of uh, this thing is the in, in engagement of the health workers, which is called health information technology used in day-to-day -day work. Which can, there's a component known as nursing informatics, telehealth, I'll be little, expanding a little about it in later. I'm just briefly going through all these. Then there's a component of clinical informatics. Clinical informatics is where the doctors use the IT systems. So the previous one was by the paramedical staff or the health providers. And now even the patients will be part of the telehealth this thing. So we have a thing known as home health care. Here it is the medical professionals use. So it's called clinical informatics, which is EMR. Short, EMR is short for electronic medical record. That is slightly different from what is called an electronic health record. The same difference between health and medicine. Right? And then we have components like CPO, CDSS. I'll be telling a little about that. Other components involved in healthcare which use IT are library sciences, getting research journals, knowledge advancement, teleeducation. There's a huge scope of uh, components of how ICT is being used in the health field. So you can use it for distance re learning that a person in a village we are, you know, reaching the, the this thing of a global village. You all know that. So anybody in a remote place, as long as they have access to a mobile or a or a computer, he can get access to all the information in the world. Then in this, we have got simulation techniques. You know how pilots learn without flying a plane. Similarly, doctors and surgeons can learn to operate on a virtual person, so that you know you don't risk people in this. Even this talk is taking place through a. Uh, through a computer system and all that. So even that is part of ICT in healthcare because we are trying to in improve your knowledge about healthcare, you know, so that's also part of the thing. So it improves efficiency within the hospital, within an overall uh, health system also. You can use it for online training of param paramedic nursing staff. It improves the record keeping processes of patients, stocks and inventory bills. And it creates better communication linkages between patient and doctors, intra-hospital, asking for specialist health, which is also known as telehealth and all that. ICT can make your life very, very smooth. My own clinic, I have a software where I keep my patient records. I operate, as I said, is a plastic surgeon. My medical record takes me two minutes and it is there for the entire life of the patient and sometimes longer also. Every time a patient comes to me again, he can call me on the phone, he can... I mean, I just have to check what he is. On the phone, I will not recognize his voice. I s just tell me, give me your number or your name. I'll trace out what you have, and I can give you online advice. Because the record is available with me all the time. And record keeping, two minutes. That's all. Because all the process, that it is keeping the record. Somebody else is also doing the entry. I also do that there's some templates and all that. Now, I'll just be talking a little bit about how CDS systems work. Like, you know, you have a diagnostic errors. You have uh, unusual presence. See, a doctor has to think of all the possibilities. The diagnostic decisions help you to create the list in front of, right in front of you, by doing a search on its own also sometimes, based on things. It can help cognitive errors. It can help system-related er errors. So, 
this is a simple example of CDS which is part of my software in which it, uh, we put in certain information and it immediately gives a compiled final detail of what is the disease status now. So, we use example CDS are drug dose recommendations, drug interactions, guideline reminders, diagnostic reminders, diagnostic reminders, current disease status indicators like I have shown out here and provision you know, of instant search and evidence which is done through Watson, clinical key up, up to date. These are various tools available. Watson is by IBM, clinical key is by Walter Kluwer's, like that. No, I'll say what I think, yeah. I was there in, the, in Masuri, I have a flat there and I was taking a morning walk and I saw four people, I had to step aside in the, in the morning track, there were four people carrying a person on a cot who had a dressing and a fracture. He needed a dressing. I was quite sure they were just taking for the dressing, you know. I said that, see, you can see that this road was two kilometers away from there. So, obviously, he was going to the hospital somewhere and uh, so two kilometers and they had already come, I think, from their own village, which was, I'm sure, quite far away. I mean, I'm, I was just talking, I was two kilometers from the, from the road, that's all. And I said that even if I stop one of these, I have done something. Because many of it can be done online. So, in this particular thing, you do a dressing, in a village it costs around 20 rupees. At the most, sometimes you have to go to the local, this thing, because, but he has to have the knowledge of what dressing to do, how to do it, the related drugs and equipment. Knowledge is the key, right? And, or they go to the doctor, but if they have to go to the hospital, this 20 rupees have become a minimum of 2,000 rupees. Because he has to travel, the relatives who are carrying him have to travel, a full day uh, of, of work is there, they may have to stay in a hotel. You can look at the, the costs have increased phenomenally and proper telehealth can decrease at least 50% of such travels if it is implemented properly. Okay. Along with that, of course, telehealth has got the health components. If you have a common EHR available, your entire data can give you public health information, it can give you disease warnings, it can give you epidemics, it can give uh, initiate emergency measures. So, how telehealth scores over, I mean, is part of this. So, a national wide EHR is what this country needs and every uh, entire world needs and this is what Aishman Bharat is also all about. This is how e-health in India is growing. So, steadily growing of this thing, telemedicine through ISRO, DT is there, web content. In the government of India has created an EHR form. They are ensuring that all hospitals, at least government hospitals, have got an EHR system in place. And they are trying to create telemedicine-based clinics in which remote counselling is done where the doctors are not there. It's called EPHC system. We think that ISO standards should be followed even within, and especially as B, since BIS is a P member, we have to ensure that they take place. Of course, the government is higher than us, so we can't, we can only try to convince them and not, you know, so we are, we are trying whatever method is possible and we have a very good chairperson, Dr. Ashok Kumar, who is helping us this. So these are the standards and their parts. I'm just running through them because there's no point, I can't read through the entire list anyway. And the red ones are the, are the ISO standards which have been incorporated. And you can see it's filled with red ones, you know. So, uh, Again, you know, it's a huge list, you know. So, these are the standards which we have created. BS has published many of them. And the best part is, if they are sold in India, they are around one-tenth the cost. So, this is the advantage that BS offers. Of course, we are trying to argue within the committee that maybe we should make it free. But then we have to follow the guidelines of BS and ISO also. You know, we can't make it free, right?